Wow, oh, perfect day. Welcome everybody to the new fly fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, we're gonna be talking about river smallmouth fishing. It's the middle of October. Today's a really great day. Some days are not so great, but the thing is everybody's out golfing, everyone's out hunting, and I'm all alone in the river. I'm gonna be going out with some friends and we're gonna show you some of the tactics you need to know to catch trophy-sized smallmouth bass. It's gonna be a great show. I know you're gonna love it. Stay with us. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Islander Precision Reels, Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, the toughest clothes on the planet, Net Staff, the world's first waiting staff and net. Fall, a time of beauty and transition. All of nature prepares for winter. In October, every day is different. The leaves are constantly changing colors, falling off the trees. The weather can vary wildly, from warm and sunny to very cold and wet. It's one of my favorite times of the year, a truly wonderful opportunity to get outdoors before old man winter shuts us all inside. For anglers, this is magic time. The fall offers you one of the best opportunities to hook into true trophy-sized fish. fish. All species really have the feed bags on, trying to fatten up so they can survive the coming winter. Even though water temperatures are rapidly dropping, predatory fish like bass are still on the hunt. Their metabolism has started to slow down, but they're now really looking for big meals and fast food. They don't want to expend too much energy chasing down food, so slow and easy is the key. As anglers, we have to understand these changes and adapt what we offer to bass and also modify the way we present our flies. First, let's look at the top sources of energy that smallmouth bass are likely to find at this time of the year. In October, you can expect the bass are really looking subsurface for food. There are few, if any, hatches, perhaps the odd dead or dying dragonfly. There are even still some frogs along the shoreline, but in essence, the main food supply is below the surface. Minnows are probably the number one source of protein for bass at this time of the year. They're still readily available along the shoreline and among boulders and rocks. Minnows will even use leaves to hide under at this time of the year there's still kingfishers on the prowl. The second most popular food source is crayfish. There's still an abundance of young first-year crayfish crawling around looking for winter homes. On sunny and warm days, they can still be seen scurrying from spot to spot. Bass are looking for these tasty treats as the cold water has slowed them down somewhat. The third source of food at this time of the year for bass are leeches. Despite popular belief, most leech species do not feed on human blood, but instead prey on small invertebrates which they eat whole. In the cold waters of October, they're moving around, looking for rocks and logs to hide beneath and also find food for the coming winter. To a smallmouth bass, they're an easy target, which is why patterns such as woolly buggers work so well. With the water temperatures dropping, and based on these food sources, this means we have to slow down our presentations. Even the bass have slowed down with the cold, so we have to match both the food sources and also the aggressiveness of the bass. I like to cast out, let my fly sink down, and then start short and small pulls on the line as I retrieve. 
Of course, I experiment a bit to find the right speed that works, but generally at this time of the year, slow is what you need to be successful. It's a beautiful fall day with a nice warm temperature. This should mean the bass are active. So I head to the river and start working one of my favorite spots to fly fish for smallmouth, around bridge pilings. They can be a real hot spot. So what I've done is I've worked my way below the bridge. And what's happened is the sun's come fully out. It's about uh, 10.30, 11 o'clock in the morning. So the food's gonna start to move in the river because there's some uh, uh, reflective solar light coming up, or heat coming up from the bottom of the river, and the bass will be get, getting more and more active. But at the same time, they're very concerned about the hawks and the osprey that are around here. So where, when I first got here, and I looked down and saw some big fish near the embutments. Right now, those fish have moved into the shadow. So going to the back end, because it's a safer place for me to wait, but also because I can cast easily into the shadows and use an upstream cast and presentation, I can get a shot at these big fish. Let's see what I can do here. There we go. How about that? And what was key is that I was slowly pulling the fly back, but not too quickly, so that I didn't um, make the presentation look unnatural, but I want to keep it off the bottom. There's a lot of weeds here. Nice and fat. He's had a good summer of feeding. And like all the bass here, he's just trying to fatten up for the winter. Beautiful. Right in the corner of the jaw. Put him in the current here, upstream. Revive, and off he goes. Now, make another cast. I'm methodically gonna work over from the back end up to the front, the edges of this abutment, and see if I can find the big bass. I systematically worked over the different angles of the bridge pilings, and it did not take me long to begin to find the bigger bass. It's a beautiful sunny fall day, perfect for smallmouth bass fishing. I'm working over some bridge pilings on a local river using an upstream cast. For presentation, I am virtually dead drifting the weighted woolly buggers downstream, waiting to feel a tug or slight weight on the line to signal a take. Look at this. And one of the things I think that's real important for you to to observe is that when I cast, whether upstream, downstream, I always keep my rod tip down in the water. And one of the reasons why is you want to have a direct connection to these fish. Oh, that's another nice one. Oh, look at this. He's got right behind me. Oh, look, he's coming right to me. Look at that, how handy. It's a large one with bass. See, isn't that incredible? You never know what you're going to catch this time of year. Four, I got a small smallmouth. There's my first largemouth. And I saw a big northern pike. This time of year, you never know what you're going to get. So remember, when you're fishing and you're casting and you're using a um, presentation that's sinking like this is, and I'm stripping it, rod tip right in. We got to learn from the still water anglers. In like this and stripping it. The reason why, so you can lift up, set that hook. You won't miss fish. There we go. There we go. This is a nice fish. Ooh, yeah. Get this guy in the reel. Oh, yeah, look at this. This is why I like this time of the year. There's no anglers out here. It's a beautiful day. And I've got the whole river to myself. Wow. 
These smallmouth are so strong. This isn't even a big one, I don't think. I saw a couple four pounders near one of these embutments. That's just a little guy. I'm trying to find them. My biggest problem is that we've had a lot of rain and the water's really come up, so I'm gonna bring this guy in quick. I'd love to catch them on top water, but they're just not on top water yet. A nice healthy, it's probably about a 12 inch fish. Nice and thick. Beautiful. We took this brown woolly bugger. All you feel is the weight. Now let's get that in 18 to 21. That'd be perfect. Thank you, sir. To emphasize the importance of keeping tight to your fly, watch this sequence where a smallmouth bass takes a strip leech pattern and then quickly rejects it, all before the angler even realizes it. Watch this again in slow motion. You can see how quickly it all happens. And because the angler has slackened his line, he missed the take. How often does that happen to us all? You have to keep tight to the fly, whether you are casting upstream or down. fish. Not as big as the last one, but still good. Oh, there he goes. Oh, look at that. Now, this one's probably in that two pound, two and a half pound range, but so strong this time of year. Cold water, I had a full season of feeding. That is a solid fish. Beautiful. Popped out real nice. And that's, I think, the peak time for us for the fishing is going to be about 12 o'clock to about 3. Oh, yeah? Okay. The next time I got out on the river was several weeks later with my good friend Barry Acton. Conditions had changed a lot. It was colder with intermittent rains and high winds. Most important, the water temperature had dropped another five degrees or so. This meant we had to really slow down our presentation and even fish them deeper in the water column. My friend Barry had some sage advice on fall fishing and why this is such a great time of the year to locate trophy-sized bass. The nice thing about fall fishing is uh, well, it's, it's quite spectacular as far as the, uh, the colors. You get the, today it's a pretty gray day, but uh, there's no bugs out here. There's no people out here. And uh, yeah, it's cold. It's, I think it was 46 degrees when we got out of the truck, but it's a bit of a wind, but uh, there's just nobody around. And uh, it's one of the nicest times to fish. You don't catch a lot of fish, but sometimes you can catch some really big fish if you're patient. Now with the retrieve, I'm going uh, fairly slow, a couple inches at a time, and you really have to sort of vary it until you find how the fish are gonna react to it. Um, but when you think you're going slow enough, slow down even more because rarely are you going as slow as you need to be. There we go. Now what was real important, what I did was I'm underneath some branches here and I used a roll cast to flip my fly out about two rod lengths out. I did it upwind 
let it sink a bit, and then real short strips. But like I said, you can see the branches above me here. If I hadn't done that roll cast, this is a decent fish. Um, I wouldn't have got this guy. And this feels like it might be a decent, oh yeah. This is a nice bass. And I'm using a black woolly bugger, just a simple black woolly bugger. And it caught this magnificent fish. Oh, look at that. Uh, how could you not like this? How could you not like this? Look at that. Is that incredible? That's a good, solid three and a half, four pound bass. And there's nobody here. It's just you and me, Barry. Let's look. Magnificent. And there he goes. At this time of the year, I love using woolly buggers, both weighted and unweighted. They simulate, through action and silhouette, all the food sources the bass are keyed into. Favorite colors include a light cream, black, and my favorite is a light brown. For rods, reels, and line, my preference is to use a six weight fast action rod in a nine foot length. It's easy to roll cast with this length of rod, which can be critical at times when fishing from the banks of the river with lots of trees behind you. There are two types of lines I bring at this time of the year. The first is a weight forward floating line. The second is an intermediate or camel line, which is excellent for getting unweighted flies down in the water column. With a sink rate of one and a half to two inches per second, this is the best choice for three to six feet of depth in slow moving water. When we return, I venture into the river alone, and this time the conditions are different again, but the fishing is still excellent. It is now November and temperatures have really dropped. We're not far from seeing ice on the river. Though it is cold, the bass are still eating, looking for that last meal before the winter sets in. I'm out alone looking for that last big bass before the end of the season. My presentation has really slowed down and I'm using an intermediate sinking line to ensure my fly is getting down to where the bass are. At this time of the year, they won't move a long distance to chase food. Everything is slowing down, so I have to too. Oh, looks good. I'm just checking to see if there's any frays or abrasions here. You know, making sure your tippet is solid is really important. These are big fish. They're gonna pull a lot. I'm using a six or seven weight rod, and uh, I, I try to use the heaviest tippet I can. Right now, I'm using one X. A lot of times I use zero X. I think the smallest tippet I go to is a 3X. So you want at least seven, eight pound test so you can get these fish in fast and release them fast so they're gonna recover. That was sweet. Oh, it's just a little guy too. And again, simple principle, I've got slower water here. It's not fast. The fish are in here eating. I cast upstream. He's had a good summer of feeding. He's in here chowing down for the last time before winter comes. One of the things that you have to keep in mind, of course, anytime you're fishing, is you've got to think about fish location. Where are they and why are they there? This time of year, when I'm looking for certain types of structure, like right here, I've got a deep slot comes right through here. There's lots of rocks on the side, so I know there's gonna be crayfish, halgamites, there'll be minnows, there's frogs in the weedier edges here. And even in the middle of October, those frogs are still active. So the big bass have moved up from the deeper water and they're in here hunting. You have to consider all the different types of structure and why the fish are here. At this time of the year, I find the bass have moved in the river from their traditional haunts like overhanging trees into deeper water. Riffles and current breaks with deeper water nearby are an excellent choice. Bridges and bridge pilings are exceptional as they provide cover and current breaks for the bass. Other places to look for smallmouth bass include current breaks caused by reefs or seams coming off points. Bass, big fish, right on. 
This is my third cast. And look at this, I'm into a big one already. Beautiful fish, absolutely gorgeous. Like, look at that. You know, anywhere in North America, this would be a trophy. You'd be so excited to catch this, whether you're in a bass tournament or you were out fishing in Kentucky on a local lake. Just gonna grab him by the lip. There we go. Look at that. Look at the size of that fish. Look at his belly. You can tell he's been feeding well, or she's been feeding well all summer. And you want a sense of perspective? There's my reel and my rod. I mean, that is a big bass. Oh boy, that water's cold. And there he goes. All right. Now, what I was doing is using an intermediate line, casting upstream, letting the fly uh, swing. And you can see it's not real fast current here, but this is typical of a lot of places. There's a bit of a slot here, lots of rocks on the edge, and he was in here hunting. There's crayfish, there's leeches, there's minnows, there's lots of food for them. They're in here doing the last binge before the ice and snow comes. Wow, what a great day of fall bass fishing. As you saw, you can get some big bass this time of year. And best of all, no bugs and generally no other anglers. For more information about this show and others in our series, go to our website at thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Do you want to learn more about this crazy and exciting world of fly fishing? Watch the other videos in the series and subscribe to the channel. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Islander Precision Reels, Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, the toughest clothes on the planet, Net Staff, the world's first wading staff and net. To learn more about the new Fly Fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook.